I will welcome everybody. Oh, look, Mike Washburn's here. All right. The star-studded cast and audience <laughs> here. So, um, all right, folks. Uh, so we are here to talk about um, game design and coding with Fortnite Creative. Um, I'll introduce myself real quick, let uh, my compadre Brian introduce himself. Um, might even make uh, Robert Gervais introduce himself while he's sitting here, but uh, we'll see if, 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 he, if he's up for it. But anyway, um, so I am the education program manager at Epic Games. Um, my primary role and mission there is to help support educators um, and students in bringing tools like Fortnite Creative, Unreal Engine, and Twinmotion into the classroom. Um, so we've been doing a lot in terms of um, creating resources that help onboard people into using these tools, uh, as well as uh, doing a lot of training for educators around these tools. So uh, it's been a real exciting time. I Prior to my starting at Epic, I started in February. I was a teacher for 28 years and um, taught game design and development for the past about 15 or so. So um, you know, it was a real natural kind of transition for me, and I'm thrilled to be um, supporting teachers in the way that I can now. So that is me, and I'll pass it over to Brian. Yeah, so uh, my name is Brian Dickman. I go by Clever Like. I uh, grew up as a kid with Commodore 64. Couldn't stop me. My parents had no clue what I was doing in there with that that 300 baud modem uh you know that's what i used to connect and collaborate with people and learn all kinds of things learned you know machine language by talking to some random stranger on the telephone um <laughs> it, you know so where there's a will there's a way i had a lot of determination and um you know fast forward i had a great career in in software and internet and um you know, got to do a local business where I started creating, you know, rekindling my love for for technology and gaming, and got to start creating my own uh, camps, classes. I taught high school for a little bit. I, I created robotics competitions, uh, and taught summer camps and and hosted a Minecraft club for five years. Uh, but basically, all kinds of technology, trying to um, unlock. The imagination and and wonder of technology for kids, uh, you know, noticing that they they got stuck at a lot of places, and I remembered being stuck, and um, you know, so I want to be that that the person that kind of helps people get unstuck and move on and see the the delight and excitement that's uh, that's available in uh, the technology they're working with, and that's why we love things like uh, Fortnite. You know, we take uh, the game that they love and try to open their eyes to new possibilities. So that's me. And then, and for me, it was the Apple II Plus, but also a 300 baud modem. Um, <laughs> and actually, um, one of my colleagues and friends is, is here with us, Robert Gervais. If you would just take a, a moment to share what you do with us. Yeah, hi, Steve. Uh, nice to meet everyone. I'm Robert Gervais. Uh, work with Steve. Um, uh, I'm on the Fortnite creative team. Uh, I actually work on education, documentation, and learning resources for um, folks who want to learn how to use Fortnite Creative um, to make their own games. Uh, prior to that, I worked on the Unreal Engine team, uh, helping to build uh, documentation and different learning resources like online videos, um, you know, lesson plans, um, showing people how to use Unreal Engine to, uh, you know, make their own indie projects or all the way up to AAA. So, um, yeah, that's me. I'm just here to support um, Steve and Brian. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, it. that's awesome. Um, all right. So, you know, what we talk about, um, what our kind of our mission at, at Epic, quite honestly, is, or at least certainly, yeah, I would say our mission is uh, taking people on that pathway from player to creator. Um, you know, and it's great. So we have this, you know, very fun game that engages many, which is Fortnite. But the beauty is Fortnite fits really in both places because with creative mode, you know, we get to move kids up that ladder towards uh, content creation um, and then, you know, moving even further into industry standard um, development tools like Unreal Engine. Um, and also in that, you know, um, Twin Motion is a really great tool that we also um, is one of our products. And for educators, since they're, you know, this is mostly educators here this evening, it's really worth noting that when we do our trainings, um, I always consider Twin Motion to be sort of our sleeper hit. Um, when people see what you can do with it, they fall in love with it and start doing amazing things. Um, and it has such a great play in education in terms of um, 
you know, even digital storytelling and, and narrative and of course architecture and all that, but it's a, just really a tremendous tool and a great introduction into that interactive 3D world of creation. Um, and what, you know, Brian and I are super excited to share about tonight is um, some of our game design and coding activities that we developed um, for Fortnite Creative. Um, last year for Hour of Code, we created a series of activities in Fortnite Creative to teach um, both game design and um, you know, coding skills. And it's really neat because each of these five activities covers different um, you know, concepts uh, like conditional statements. Uh, the, the music one is great because not only does it bring music into play, but it also teaches loops with the sequencer and such. Um, the treasure hunt race gets into variables. Um, the obstacle course gets into collision detection using triggers and events and, and such. And we also use functions more extensively in the tower escape trivia one. But uh, I'm just gonna kind of show you the structure of these. Uh, so basically each of these lesson plans, and we'll drop this all in the chat. Um, I got each it. one, you got it? Thanks. Each one that. has a lesson plan, which is you know your typical teacher facing lesson plan. Um, you know, have it on your desk when your supervisor comes in to observe you kind of thing, but with all the teaching, teaching stuff. Um, we also have assessment tools built in, uh, in terms of a rubric, and it's all standards aligned with, uh, with Common Core ISTE, well, really, in this case, the CSTA standards, as well as the ISTE standards. Um, and then what is really great is we also have a student guide and a teacher guide, which are almost the same. Uh, the teacher guide just includes call outs to a teacher to help you facilitate the learning in your classroom environment. And these basically guide students through every step of creating this particular activity. And each one also kind of gets into extension activities. Once kids create this first part, they can easily um, move forward to further develop. And, in my opinion, that's where the magic happens. Like we teach kids or get kids started on that path. And then when it comes, especially to game design, kids very quickly realize what they want their game to have or what they want to do. And that's the most natural springboard to learning um, or self-directed learning. Because when kids have a problem that's meaningful to them, they'll go out there and try to solve it. Um, so it's really wonderful to see that. And that's how each of these is set up. Um, we also have, some of them have accompanying videos as well, um, which we're, we have shared. Um, and then moving right along, uh, we also have a teaching with Fortnite creative course for the educators that want to just get started with um, bringing Fortnite into the classroom. And that course is available on our um, Unreal uh, online learning portal. And I'll drop that in the I chat for Brian will. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm going to just go through a couple more things. I'm mostly excited about Brian jumping in and giving you a beautiful demo of stuff. But, um, you know, when we think of Fortnite Creative, um, you know, it, it's important to kind of get into the, the why is this, you know, something good for the school environment. And, you know, in, in my mind, for one, uh, you know, I've been involved in game-based learning for years and years. And, you know, when Sandbox games came into, into the picture, I think they kind of um, turned, <laughs> turned game-based learning on its head in a sense. We went from using games as experiences to learn content, which is still a wonderful use of games, no doubt. But we came to the other side where now kids are creating content in, game, you know, in a game world. So that sandbox environment allows kids to create anything they can imagine. You know, we see it with games like Minecraft, Fortnite creative and such. Um, also, you know, student agency, uh, kids, you know, this is their world, right? We're meeting them and bringing, you know, in their world. And that does so much for kids when we, for one, acknowledge that their world is important and that what's interesting of interest to them can be valuable. Um, the graphics in Fortnite are awesome. The, if you've ever, if you haven't been in Fortnite creative yet, you'll notice that there are all these great prefabs, like buildings that you could just take and put right in the environment. 
there's, and then any piece from those buildings can then be copied and pasted anywhere in to continue building. There's also galleries, which have a number of different objects that you could bring into your world, um, and then devices and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then this low floor, high ceiling, we always speak of getting started in Fortnite Creative, real easy. Jump in, get in your island, place some prefabs, kind of build an environment. If it's a class-related activity, maybe create the, you know, the world that you want to represent to demonstrate some learning objectives. But then it gets you know, more advanced as you start using some of these computer science concepts that we bring into these lessons where you're getting into triggers and conditional statements and you know, really um, you know, making the automation so that anything can happen in your game world. And you know, I've always loved this student expertise piece. Um, when I started, you know, when I first brought Minecraft into my classroom, it was a complete game changer and it transformed really my approach to teaching and learning, quite honestly. I went from thinking I was supposed to teach kids everything or be the expert and stand in front of them and teach them how to do it to being um, vulnerable <laughs> and allowing them to bring a tool that was meaningful to them into the classroom and demonstrate their expertise in order to meet the learning objectives I might have presented. Um, you know, I got had this experience of becoming a, a, a co-learner with my students, which has been was the biggest joy for me, I think, in teaching for the many years. You know, when I could sit down with a kid, have them show me something, um, you know, or learn alongside them, you know, that's pretty awesome. And when kids can then also become, you know, um, support their peers in using these tools, that's pretty great. And you know, another neat thing about Fortnite is it's available on so many platforms. So, you know, I've had kids on their place, especially during COVID, it was great when it all of a sudden democratized the way, you know, kids had resources at home in order to, you know, help them in their activities for school. But I would have a kid on a PlayStation 4 working with their friend on the Xbox, working with their friend on the computer and all in the same game world because um, it has cross play and everything's saved in the cloud. So now the kid who started the game goes home and there it is, you know, once they log in again and continue working on it. Um, and that collaboration piece um, is really great with tools like this where they're built for multi-user experiences. Um, just real quick, I'll share that we also have a full um, series of Hour of Code activities for Unreal Engine um, using a beautiful asset kit that we had created specifically for these. And these five lessons take students through um, creating a 3D platform game um, by going through all five lessons. And, uh, you know, same format as I described for the um, Fortnite ones. And we also have a Teaching with Unreal Engine course that just launched um, probably a couple of weeks ago, right? And uh, maybe Brian will be so kind, or I'll share that one when Brian kicks off his uh, screen sharing. So, why don't you? As they say, take it away, Brian, and I'll, whoops, where is my, I got to unshare here. Okay, all you. Okay, cool beans. Thanks, Steve. I'm just post putting the post of our YouTube playlist that has the Unreal stuff in it. Yes. Since it's kind of in, we're at the Unreal stage of things. Um, so thank you. That's awesome overview, and that's that's what excites me about uh, Fortnite Creative as well. And having been at a, at a, a lucky time for me to observe, like my middle school age son using Fortnite to spend hours on a social studies homework assignment. And I was like, wow, like I was originally like, I don't know if I want you like every other parent, <laughs> like, I don't know if I want you doing all this shooting stuff, you know? And um, I'm thinking like, let's get something productive going on here. And then like Fortnite Creative came out. Um, like first it was the the playground mode where I'm like, hmm, they're, you know, like, it's coming it's the for creative mode is coming and uh and when it showed up we embraced it right away and um so 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 you'll know Fortnite as the the battle royale the big uh, booga three million dollars uh world cup um and and it's a you know competitive esport platform um but but taking all of those assets all the game mechanics 
the familiarity that students built and then put them in a playground where they can kind of use all that and leverage all that to create whatever they want is, is what's super exciting. And um, what, one of the things I think is really cool about um, the way Fortnite Creative works is that there, there's no coding, right? So, so when it came time for us to like, uh, let, let's come up with, let's teach people how to code um, really in a platform that has no coding, uh, that was pretty interesting because what's nice about it is it takes the the syntax out of the equation and gets them to focus on the action. Like, what do you what do you want to have happen? Uh, what do you need to have happen, and how can we do that? And um, what's great is that there's devices, lots of powerful devices that allow you to. Um, kind of configure in such a way that gets you to accomplish the task that you want. So, so uh, that's what we did with the hour of code is we took these concepts, these logic problem solving concepts, and we created lessons where you could learn how to implement them in Fortnite creative, which is different than your normal syntax, you know, if then else statements. Um, and we'll go through, we'll, we'll review some of that, but so that's, um, you know, a quick overview of kind of like our, uh, you know, where Fortnite Creative sits in the world and uh, how people can use it separately from, you know, Battle Royale. And also now um, I'll kind of walk through, I'm in, I'm in the lobby on my screen share here. I'll walk you through the process just so you can kind of see how we get to an island along the way. So I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm uh, just launched Fortnite. This is the, I can, I can play Battle Royale or any other maps that other people have created, or I can go into creative mode. So um, I've, I can select here all the different modes of play. Um, there's a nice little create right up here in the upper tab, which is nice and handy. And then I can click on play. And so what's happening now is that essentially in the background, Epic's loading up a, the creative lobby for me. And I, my character is being moved into this creative mode space. Now creative mode is a place to create. It's also a place to share uh, and enjoy other people's creations. So you can see this is like a community center, uh, all community related content, including the lobby that we're in. This lobby um, was made by a community member and it's featured and it rotates every week. Uh, one of the things I like about I'm very career focused. Like I, I see, I see the minute things that you do that kind of set your trajectory in life. And, and, you know, you've got so many different avenues into a career through esports, you know, or you could just enjoy it and end up doing something else, but uh, we're trying to create avenues. And I look at something as simple as like the lobby that the game starts in. That's, that's a, that's something that might get somebody's interest. You know, this lobby, somebody made it. And they got featured to all the millions of players uh, around the world. And did you know that you can do that? You can create something. Um, and they rotate every week. You can be inspired by there's a community, a supportive community. Um, you know, so there's there's a already a door opening and a potential opportunity to kind of expand and find find your 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 love, the thing that you love to do. I get to play video games for a living now. It took me how many years to figure out like how to how to basically spend my time playing and uh, as work and enjoying it. So um, we want e that for everyone. So I'm in this lobby. You could see here there's lots of different screens. All these screens are portals into games that other people have made, and this is just the featured games. There's lots and lots more that you could find on other websites and things like that. Um, but there's a nice little golden glowing portal here that's got a nice little light beam. We'll walk over to it, and you'll see there's a little console. That console will let us uh, control what this little portal leads to. And then I have it currently set to my Hour of Code demo island. And so I'm going to take you into that by walking into it. <clears throat> so now my account has up to 50 different islands that I can save into it on the cloud. Everything's on the cloud. And this is one of them. And I am in, uh, I'm the owner. I'm in edit mode. I can uh, basically fly. 
and I could go through buildings. You could see here, this, this space was created by myself and a couple of others, including uh, Ian Southwell, our, our creative director, who is an environment artist. Uh, you know, um, I let him alone for a few minutes um, to, to work on the environment as I was working on all the buildings and stuff and, and it come out, it was like, you know, it was, it was amazing. Um, so what, what's really cool here is these environments are made from different assets that were provided in the game. So you could see here, uh, as I'm looking at them, it's highlighting the actual mesh or, or model that is the boulder. And you could just see there, it's basically the same shape that's been scaled and rotated and moved around to look more natural. Uh, what's cool about that is that you can, it's, it's not very expensive, like on memory, it doesn't take a lot of resources to have the same shape moved around. Um, so you can create these really uh, rich environments very um, quickly and efficiently as far as space is concerned. But what I did was I, I took the five different hour of code lessons and I built them into one island that's kind of like a here's what you can do when you put that into when you put that into uh, you know a working functional example. And what we'll look at um, we'll kind of fly through each of them real quick just to show you how they're set up. So I have the um, the obstacle course here first. You can see these two little these two little trigger devices. They're invisible. They'll they're basically tracking. Um, so they answer the thing like, "What do I do? like? I want to know when the person is in there and when they leave." Okay, so that's your question, and then your solution is these hidden triggers that could can set the state uh, based on when you enter and when you leave. And um, there's other devices here. This is a checkpoint device. So you could see we have a lot of failure ahead of us here. Uh, checkpoint is going to be really handy. Um, and then we have some other um, uh, devices that are discussed in the lesson. So collision detection, for me, I think it's interesting because, first of all, it's relatable to students. They know what hit boxes are. You know, if you're playing a video game, they know a headshot is worth more than a body shot and 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 so the idea of a, a you know a bullet object and a uh, a player or vehicle object uh colliding uh, the, that concept is like that's that's some serious math right there like figuring out um that overlap between those two objects and and so i think it's an interesting opportunity to kind of uh, demystify um collision into uh, into a sense where they can understand it and put it in the context of their world. So this might be what you might call a death run, uh, which is a pretty popular concept in 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 the game. And so you would have to go through here. This is a spike trap. If you stand on it, you'll get spikes. These are little zappers. You'll get zapped back. Uh, this one will freeze your feet, so you'll be really slippery. And this uh, this next one makes you move fast. So like you get frozen feet and then you have to move fast, hopping on these platforms, figuring out how to navigate this ramp without hitting this spike trap. And, um, and then you have a little spike trap maze. One of the interesting things about the spike traps is that they, they have a, um, an interesting collision where you can, you can actually trigger the spike trap, but the actual spikes don't hit you. And I think that's a nice relatable thing about the collision detection is that one, one collision is to trigger it and the other one is actually getting hit by the spikes. And so the way you manipulate these spike traps is to just kind of temp, you know, taunt it basically and get out of the way. And then, it, and then that's how you would go through the spike traps. I'm, I'm in edit mode, so they're not killing me, which is nice. I put a little da damage barrier here, red lamps to indicate that there could be a problem. And it just gives you minor damage over time, which just really kind of panics you. And it, right as you're about to face a triple, tri uh, triple spike trap. And then we have some bouncers. You have to kind of bounce, bounce, bounce. And then there's a target here that you land on. And you could see I have a switch that's invisible in the game that triggers uh, these visual effects, which are fireworks when you finish. And that'll finish, that'll trigger the end of the game. This little portal here, here is where you'll dump out facing this way and it'll thank you and tell you to, to move on. So that's kind of like the, the collision detection. So th the exploration in the hour of code is really what is, what is collision detection, how does it work and how can we experiment with the different objects to create something like a death run that leverages all the different aspects of it. Um, it's an important thing. And I think there's lots of 
aha moments that could be had there. Uh, there's another cool thing, which is uh, music. There's the sequencer device, which is this pad here that has this volume connected to it. And that volume, you could change the shape of it. And whatever you put inside of that volume, like when you hit the pad or trigger it through a channel, it will trigger a, a pulse that goes through it like a shock wave. And that pulse will trigger uh, anything in its path. And in this case, there's music blocks that are available in, in a gallery. And I'll show you a little bit about galleries and prefabs and devices in our edit mode here before, we're, before we launch this. Um, and you can see I have some other devices kind of laying around. I have a, a little remote trigger. And this is a HUD device. This is what puts text on the, on the screen for me to inform the player. But I'm going to trigger this manually so you can see what the music uh, sequencer uh, lesson is like, which is where we teach loops. So I'll trigger it by just landing on it. Pretty cool, huh? I did that myself, and I, I'm not a music person. I was I was pretty proud of myself, I have to say. Um, but I mean, people have done like Beyonce songs and other stuff like real contemporary music. If you understand music and chords and and tempos and all that stuff, like you can you can make really interesting, compelling music. Again, this is um, what's what's great about these five different hours of code is it could tap someone into their area of interest. I've seen, like, especially in robotics, see someone who could build something really well, but is not as interested in the programming and someone that can't build, but loves the programming. And like, you just know that the, that people's interests can go in a million different directions. And this is a great, uh, a great pathway, uh, but it also teaches the concept of loops, which are a useful thing in, um, in coding. And this is an interesting way to implement it in a visual way. Uh, I'll One of the Go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, one of the neat things about the Hour of Code activities in Fortnite Creative, too, is that these, you know, it's definitely gets into a little bit of that stealth learning. Like, kids are understanding a concept like loops without it having to be, you know, drilled in such a way like that they have to, you know, understand it from a programming standpoint. So it's a really neat, and that's, that's a lot of what Hour of Code is about, is kind of exposure to computer science. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, it provides that, which I think is really valuable. Yeah. And th that's the cool thing that we're also showing is like, we want to open, uh, ultimately, if you get the students involved in this, you like, like Steve was saying, like, this is their space, like, this is their game. They know it. They don't have any of that hurdle to get over, like, how the controls work and even the points of interest and in the, in the, the buildings and structures. They know exactly what season it's from. And, you know, they, they, they're not in a strange land. They're, they're, uh, they just have new things to learn. And what's cool about it is that, um, it's directed by what they want as a result. Uh, so it's not like I am learning, I need to learn arrays. So I'm going to write a library catalog, uh, you know, and I'm going to sort them and do this other stuff just so I can really get the, the idea of arrays uh, pounded through my head. Like it's, it's the concept of, of you have these tools at your disposal. What can you create with them? And then your need W you know, will be the, the thing that you need to solve. Um, so I, I need this to work better. You know, that iteration is key. Like you play it. Mm, yeah, that doesn't work right. Mm, mm, ooh, I need, I need it to do this. How do I do that? Explore, collaborate, research, um, at, at, uh, a quick, uh, useful thing here, I believe, uh, our very own, uh, Mr. Gervais here, uh, is responsible for this tremendous resource, which is a, um, online documentation for Fortnite creative. It's got some great onboarding stuff, but also reference material, like what every device is and what the settings are and how they work. So this is a good resource for students to, uh, to use when they're, um, when they're trying to figure out how things to function. Uh, speaking of function, what a segue. Uh, I have hidden in this little castle uh, the, the functions that are in our function hour of code exercise. And these are basically, the idea here is that these are remotely triggered by whether or not you select the correct answer or the incorrect answer. 
And what I wanted to do here is have a series of steps uh, fire when when you trigger that. So so by triggering the um, you know the correct answer sequencer, you'll get a sound that says correct. You'll get a message that says correct. The 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 level will advance you to the next step, um, you know, and then it'll it'll prepare for the next the next question. And uh, you know, if you get the incorrect answer. Uh, you'll get a message that you had the wrong answer. You will not progress, and there'll be some delay for you to try again. Um, so that's the cool thing there is you get to learn a function. So now we can have, uh, now that we have these functions, we can have a whole series of questions with a very simple way of kind of navigating the user from, from one question to the next. And so that's what Trivia Tower is, is this big tower where you spawn in and you have to answer a uh, each question. And when you get the correct answer, this device called a trick tile will break the floor underneath you, which will advance you down to the next one and so on. And so that process is repeatable as um, to any extent that you want, once you understand the basic functionality. And we just have you come out and then uh, teleport back to the lobby when you finish with that one. And then the, the last, um, before we get to the conditional one, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a little more detail, is the um, basically the concept of variables. So we're using the idea of a score counter to tell you about variables. These, uh, these coins are worth something, so they're an additive number to your score variable. And um, you, you go down this slide and collect as many as possible. And as you're collecting them, there's a counter down here that will add them up for you and display them. So if you're thinking of a game concept where you, you know players are competing against each other to see who can collect the most or do the most, uh, the idea of, of tracking that and even, uh, oh, ooh, you did the wrong thing, minus 10. Uh, you know, so, so I mean, Harry Potter would be, would, would be upset you know, for, for you getting minus 10 from the team, but you know, he'll pick up the slack for you. But, um, so, so that's what this exercise is really showing is basically how you can um, change a variable like the score and then how you can manipulate that and use it in your, in your activities. Um, I put a little Easter egg in here uh, where you can kind of go and see our, uh, an eSports lab spray painted the wall with all kinds of logos from my inventory and stuff like that. And uh, that's just a, th a thing they can go explore and I made this this uh, thing like an arcade type vibe. So created a lot of this from uh, from scratch, and also did some creative work. <laughs> I'll show you some of the creative work, like um, like this here. We've got a chair that's kind of got the console, the control. Got this little piece of metal there, a video game, a piece of metal, and then like a pilot chair. So these different parts have been assembled into a little flight simulator style game. We created this dance dance revolution style game with some arrows and um, some speaker, boombox speakers and a screen and a little triangle shapes. Uh, and, and this little cool effect thing is just detecting if I, if I dance. If I dance, it's sending a message to this button that it's it's safe to play the music lesson. So it kind of forces you to dance before uh, before you're allowed to play the music. Um, so in that regard, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to be able to bring them in because this island is pretty maxed out. This is another cool. This is another cool one. This here, this video game, is actually. Um, I'll I'll pull it out. It's actually a deep fryer <laughs> for French fries. So. Um, you can be you can be creative with with the assets. You put a screen and a little uh, arcade game console on it to make it look like a, a video game unit. So you can be creative. That's that's the fun part. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, some of the creative assets that you have access to in in the game just to see uh, get a sense for the scope and and capability that exists in here. So um, from a design standpoint. And remember, you saw the island, uh, the structures, the stones, the environment that was creative, created for uh, visual students. Uh, there's lots of potential there. And then for students that maybe want to get focused on, you know, that maybe can't build or don't want to spend their time building, 
you go to the prefab section. The prefab section is organized into these different categories that are very much like points of interest from the Battle Royale game. So if they've been playing Fortnite for a while, they know a lot of these destinations, they know the architecture, they know what's there, they'll know what to look for. There's also tools um, that help you search and find things in, in buried in these different areas as well. So like if I went to, uh, if I was, if we were doing a unit uh, in history about a war or something like that, and I would need to create some scene I can I could find one of these outposts and I could place the entire fully built, fully constructed outpost, or I can go into it and look at the pieces that were used to make it. And I could extract any one of those pieces individually and use them right away without having all of the outpost sitting there. So it allows you to have the fully pre-built pre-built Lego set, like the picture on the box, or uh, all the different pieces. Uh, you, you don't. Uh, you can actually have both. You don't have to choose one or the other. So that's the great thing. And you can have as many as you want. Um, so that's an idea of what the prefabs will get you. And the list is is huge of, of categories and buildings within those categories. And then when you have galleries, you think of galleries as like here's an asset pack. Like um, this theme, we have like our our bank gallery. So if I look at that, you could see this has different types of walls, walls with windows, solid walls, walls with doors, doors that close that you can interact with, you know, stairways, different types of stairways, straight turned, um, broken walls, corner pieces, decorative pieces, things like that. So you'll have your structural walls, floors, ceilings, door, functional doorways, functional lights in a lot of cases. And then you'll have also, in some cases, you'll have things like props, like in the last one you saw like different, um, things like a little uh, scissor lift and, and other, uh, you know, fire extinguishers and other props that, that are part of the, the kit. Um, they're not part of this particular gallery is like the bank gallery for the building pieces. Now the bank probably has like a prop gallery. So if you look at some of these different, different things, you'll also see, um, you might see a prop gallery like art deco prop gallery so if i look at that you can see now these are all your props these are all your things that you can place rotate scale decorate you know and this is just one of the many lots of creative potential here and and that's what's exciting about the galleries is that it's all the parts that you have access to and you build your own from that and then we have our our devices this is what we use for coding. This is what we're um, what we're going to be putting in. You know what you'll use in Hour of Code, where all your game mechanics come from. Look at all this, all these tools that help you imp implement the logic that you want to make things happen in the game. And also, there's fun vehicle. There's lots of fun to be had as well. Um, the team, the Fortnite creative team has been so busy, like the amount of new stuff that's been added and how great it is really uh, a serious investment. It's been really cool. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go over, speaking of prefabs, this bank was like a, was a prefab. I was able to just drop the whole thing there. I didn't have to work very hard to get to it. And this is our lesson. This is our, our bank heist um, conditional statements. So I took a simple if then statement and I built like an escape room concept out of it. So you get into the bank and then these triggers here will trap you in the bank. The doors will lock behind you and the police will be called. And um, and then this, this timer will start a three minute countdown and you've got this persistent beep of a clock and there's a, a flopper, which is our key to unlock this gate. And if we, if we unlock the gate and head in here, this device, which is called a perception trigger, will see us. It will detect our motion, and it will call the police, and we'll get busted. Uh, so we have to figure out how to deactivate that. And, and you see I mounted it on a surveillance camera, so it looks like the camera is seeing you. Um, you know, and this button here, you see this button has a radius. So I'm not actually interacting with the button. I'm just walking close to it and it says, search the safe deposit box. So it uh, allows you to do kind of contextual things. Um, we got speakers that provide sound and then another door to unlock. You could see here, the, these doors all have this conditional button, 
which says, I will only trigger when I get something in return. So in this case, this one wants a slurp fish and you'll get the slurp fish from the safe deposit box. You give this device the slurp fish, it tells this lock, de it tells this lock device it's safe to unlock and open the door. So that's the if, the if then statement is this conditional button. And then the, if, it's, if it's a true statement, then the door will open for you. So let's do a quick playthrough of that and then we can open it up for questions. So if I go to my island and then start game, all the things are done kind of in real time, uh, saved as you go. And you could do backups and restore backups and stuff if you make mistakes as well. Um, but now I could access any of the different events, uh, the different activities from this island. There's a, a code that I could put in chat where you can actually go and play this inside of, um, actually inside of Fortnite. There's a coin in the in the custodian's room back there, but I kind of hit a coin in the bushes here. So if you say reach into bush, you could see this is one of those buttons that has a radius. So I'm in within the interaction radius with a delayed interaction time. And so now the button's been activated which gave me a coin. And now I can go up to this button. It says, I need one gold coin. And I have that in my inventory. You could see on my uh, lower right-hand side of the screen, it's a tiny little gold circle um, next to the, my materials. And so I'm going to interact with this button. And now the door is open. Now remember, there was those two triggers right there by the door. And so as soon as I walk through, they're invisible, but they'll notice me when I walk through. So I walk through, boom. The doors have been shut, they're locked. I can't get out, I can't get out. Um, so I did have like an abort button that I added in there, but now you would have to go through and uh, activate this conditional button. It's missing a flopper. So flopper is a gold fish, orange fish. I will pick that up here and uh, interact with that button. The door is unlocked. I can get in there. Now, remember that little device there on the surveillance camera will bust me because it's a um, it's a perception trigger. So if I walked in there, I would restart the level. And I'm going to go up here, just kind of show you how I built, put the pieces together. I, and I used a prefab building. All this building was completely pre-done. All I had to do was add the code into it. Now I'm disabling the security cameras at the computer upstairs. And now I, head, I can head downstairs into this. And now I don't get busted by the camera. Search the safe deposit box. So all I did was take that hour of code lesson, the basic concept, and then just kind of multiply it. And, and then you start to get a little creative on, uh, above that, you know, and start adding your own, own style to it. So here's all the gold. We just have to take the gold. Please arrive in a minute and a half. We'll be set, and then we'll be we'll be able to retire, and live the good life. <laughs> so that's um, that's it. It's going to now teleport me back to the to the mall to kind of jump into another exercise. So let me let me uh, like pause there and open it up if anybody has any questions or any feedback or input. Hopefully that wasn't too fast. No, so the, you know, Brian's world is absolutely beautiful. The world showing all that, um, you know, the students can start on a, you know, uh, an empty island, of course, and just, and, and just create and continue to build on it. Um, the expectation isn't for it to become necessarily as beautiful as Brian's, but for them to, especially if they go through all five of the hour of code activities, they end up with kind of a, series of like almost like mini games within their their experience and um and i love that um the lock and key one because it does lend well to that escape room concept which can be built into any curriculum content area also as you get kind of creative with you know what the mission is and what kids are trying to accomplish and whatnot but um definitely if you have any questions feel free where i know we're kind of about a a little bit over time, so just leave it open for a minute if there are any questions. Cool. Yeah, hopefully those links in the chat are are useful for anyone. And of course, you could reach out to reach out to me and to me, Steve.
Sounds good. There we have it. Well, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate um, you joining us tonight. Yeah, and thanks for joining. We will need to close the session. Sorry, let me do thanks, that. Guys. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Scott. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Man, Look it's like a reunion here. Star I know. Trek. We got a 4v4 going on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. I think I have to. Um, I recognize that voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's God. That's right. You haven't <laughs> seen each other before. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. All right, folks. Thanks a lot. Catch you all next time. Next time. Well See done. You like well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're so polite. All right, catch y'all later. All right, see ya. Close. I, have to, I have to lock the door because the last one's here. All right. Oh. Later.